science. Here on Brainiac, we really do love to immerse ourselves in our subject, and no one more so than resident Brainiac boffin, John Tickle. Whether it's tramping around in a swimming pool full of custard, or plunging into a pit of homemade quicksand, John really loves to get his hands dirty, and frequently, most of the rest of him too. And the good news is, he's ready to take on a brand new challenge. Aren't you, John? I am indeed, Richard. Because today, John Tickle is going to swim in syrup. Well, here it is, one pool full of syrup, not something you see every day. Um, I should point out the Brainex have been here all night filling it up and they're just now topping it off. Um, John, why do you want to do this? Well, it's all in the name of science, Richard. Right. I believe that I can swim as fast in this pool full of syrup as I could in an equivalent pool full of water. You see, that's stupid. Well, it might sound stupid, Richard, yes. but the question has been debated for years. Isaac Newton and his contemporary Christian Huygens were debating it back in the 17th century when Isaac Newton was writing his seminal text, Principia Mathematica. What, they were talking about pools full of syrup? Absolutely. Newton thought that the speed of an object through a fluid would depend on the viscosity of that fluid. Huygens disagreed. I still don't see why you want to swim to a pool full of syrup. Well, I've got this theory that Huygens was right, at least for human-sized projectiles. Which means same speed through the syrup as in the water. Rubbish. OK, well, before you do it, you want to try with water. Well, we've got to have a control experiment, obviously. OK. Now, uh, you are quite tall, John. Yes. And I can't tell but notice, almost as tall, in fact, as the pool is far across. So how are you going to swim? Well, what I've come up with is that I'll paddle around three times, you can time me on this watch, and then we'll compare the time that I have in the pool of water with the pool of syrup. OK. <laughs> Good luck. I'm going to need it. <laughs> So here it is, your pool full of water. Should point out, we do have, rest assured, Brainiac lifeguard well, behind us. Filling me with confidence. Yeah. Okay, are you ready for this? Uh, just about, yeah. Stop watching, ready. Three laps, we'll be watching. In your own time, on you go. The water first, remember, this is our benchmark time. Swim like a fish! <coughs> go for it, John. Three, two, one, go. Go. Okay, we're away. So, how could swimming in syrup be as fast as swimming in water? Well, when you swim through the water, you obviously have less resistance than you would with the syrup. So one would suppose that you could go faster. However, in syrup, though you do experience more drag, you can also generate more force forward with every stroke because you have more to push against. Huygens believed the two effects would cancel each other out. 28 seconds, well done, John. Out you get, let's get the steps in, have him out. 28 seconds, that's the time. That's really quite water. cold. <laughs> yes, well, that doesn't matter. That's not part of the experiment. It's irrelevant. How are you feeling? Cream cracker. Good. Take a breath. Take another breath. Okay, syrup. Here we go. Your pool of syrup awaits. See? In fact, you might as well have a quick taste before you get in. Mmm. Nice? Yeah, well, not nice, but it's syrup. It's lovely. In you get. Your theory says this should be 28 seconds as well. Yes, absolutely. I think that's rubbish. We'll find out. <laughs> in you get. Think what a moment this is for science. The first person to do this. Can you feel that viscosity? Yes. Uh, Viscousing? Doubts now. Yeah, it's your theory, mate. <laughs> right. No. On your own time. Okay. And three, two, one, go. Okay. <laughs> Well, it's all very well doing quadrilateral equations in the fancy graphs, but science is frankly all bosh, unless you actually go off and do it for real. And if Huygens and Newton had had half a brain between them, maybe they'd have worked that one out too. Newton's an idiot! <laughs> <laughs> Newton was a clever man! You can't disprove it! John Tickle is rather lazily not even doing the full circles, and is still failing rather miserably to get up to the same speed he got through the water. Each stroke should be making more power! Even given the fact that he's already done one rather tiring swim, he should really be going a lot faster than this if his rather stupid theory is to have any merit. Keep going, John! Keep going! Keep going! You're nearly there! As fast through syrup as you can through water? There you go! Uh, no. 51 seconds! <laughs> Come on, out you get! Now, just remind us, who was it that reckoned it would make no difference? Which scientist? Huygens thought it wouldn't make no difference. Huygens thought it made no difference. Newton thought it would. Yes. Newton was right. 51 seconds. Get out. I can hardly move. <laughs> uh. 
The plain fact is that, like blood, syrup is thicker than water, so it's harder to swim in. Why am I not surprised? So, that theory was, uh, was not entirely true, then, it no. wasn't. What did it feel like? Oh, it felt like I was swimming through concrete. What Two happened to this extra power? I don't know. Two strokes in, and I thought Huygens was an idiot. I'm never going to listen to anything that he's written again. Well, if ever you meet him, sling him in a pool full of syrup, you know what it's like now. Well, that's final proof, then. Thanks to John Tickler and our experiment, you can't swim as fast through syrup as you can through water.